In this tutorial, we're going to run you through W3 Total Caches database cache configuration. Starting off in the WordPress dashboard and navigating down to performance on the left hand side, we're just over in the W3 Total Cache dashboard right now. So what we want to do first is go into the general settings and we can just use this link up the top database cache to quickly jump down and just make sure we turn on the database cache. From here, we need to go into database cache in the left hand side menu. This is where we can take care of advanced configuration of the database cache. The first option we have available to us is don't cache queries for logged in users. So I'm currently logged in to an account and you know any other accounts that happen to be logged in, anytime they request a page, it'll freshly query the database. It won't actually use any cached queries. That's the main setting there anyway, so just below this we have the advanced settings and we have a maximum lifetime of cache objects and this just determines the natural expiration time of unchanged items. The higher the value, the larger the cache of course, so the default is 180 seconds, so that's only 3 minutes and that's quite low really in the big scheme of things, so what you can do here is you can actually ramp that up and naturally you can almost ramp it up as high as you would like. The only limiting factor there is if you have a site that is updated regularly, it's definitely best to keep it at 180 seconds or perhaps even lower. It just depends. You'll need to have an idea of how much load your database server is taking on when you're making any changes to that though. The second option we have to change here is the garbage collection interval. So if you are caching to the disk, you can specify how frequently the expired cache data is removed. As it mentions here, it says for busy sites, a lower value is the better option. Naturally, you can set this to anything you like. And like many things when it comes to caching and just tweaking your server or you know your platform, such as WordPress in this instance, it's usually best to try a few different settings out and see what works for your particular situation because you know, what's right for one person isn't necessarily right for another. The next option, and this is one that we have seen before, is the ability to never cache certain pages. So if you don't want to cache particular pages, maybe your home page for instance, you can just set that in there that you don't want to cache it. The next options we have available to us are ignored query stems. So this is just to not cache any queries that contain these terms. This is probably foreign to most people, in fact, it's very unlikely that most common regular WordPress users will have come across anything like these before. And basically, if you want to find out more query stems, you need to enable debugging mode in WordPress, which is doable by a small change to the WP config file in the root directory of the WordPress installation. If you scroll down in that file, you'll actually find that uh, the debug mode is disabled by default, but you can very easily turn it on. Next, we have the ability to not cache any queries that contain these words or regular expressions. So we have insert, delete, update, replace, and create initially, but if you scroll down, there's uh, quite a few other ones in there, and you can add your own into there as well, should you wish to do that. Again, this is one of those reasonably advanced things where if you need to add something in there, or you do run custom a very custom website, then it may be advantageous to add those in there. So with this in mind, we're just going to save all settings and then we need to empty the page cache and then we're done. So that's an overview of the database cache settings in W3 Total Cache. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to ask in the comments below. 